And hello! Welcome to Solo Playthroughs. We are going to finish off the Return to Dumbwood's Legacy cycle. And uh, yeah, we've been doing this for a while, so <laughs> it's probably time to bring this to a close. We are in Scenario 7, I think they call it, but it's really 8. We know that by now. And we are going with Stella Clark. She is one of the Investigator decks. I have some thoughts about the Investigator decks. We'll get to that in a second. But first, uh, I will say that we are... Let me put the Scenario card up. There we go. Lost in time and space. Hold on. All right, that I don't know if you guys heard that, but I heard that, and that was loud in my ears. All right, good. So we are uh, gonna uh, again. Lost in time and space is the final uh, showdown in this campaign, and we are up against Yog Sothoth himself, who in the return to does start on the table, uh, which is not the case in the uh, main campaign before you get to the return to. So a few announcements. Uh, I am on a 25 second delay. So what you have are seeing is roughly 25 seconds in the past. I do that for quality issues and Mrs. Playthroughs is not here again. So you are stuck with Steve for another week, but he was good luck last time we did this three weeks ago. So I am a big fan of uh, having him here because Mrs. Playthroughs, I don't know, I lost four times in a row with Mrs. Playthroughs and then I win with Steve. I think this is more than a coincidence. So look, we're going to, um, I am only doing three weeks. My schedule got a little uh, messed up. So I, I'm doing back-to-back -back live playthroughs. I will take two weeks off from live playthroughs and then I will have three live playthroughs in a row on the other side of that. Now, the investigator decks i really like them on a lot of levels uh, i don't love them uh when they were marketed i felt like they were going to be like ready made good well constructed decks that you can just give to someone and go i don't think that's the case unless you're playing a three or four investigators minimum if you're playing solo or you're playing a true solo or you're playing with two i don't think the investigator decks are very good because they do need some serious substitutions if you're going to have a chance now at the higher levels you can you can fudge it you can take four of those decks and you can probably have a really great campaign especially through like the earlier cycles but in the later cycles you're probably going to want to start subbing out some cards and making them a little bit more balanced some of the choices and what cards to put in is a little weird but it is what it is i, I definitely not what i would not have <laughs> said oh here's investigate you're ready ready to go they're not ready to go not in my opinion and definitely not true solo so get that out of the way stella stella is really interesting uh she is a tank i mean a tank and a half she will uh I mean, eight and eight with her sanity and her health is insane but the problem is she is reliant on failing tests so how good can an investigator be when they're relying on failing tests one more thing I forgot to do. I'm all discombobulated today, guys, and girls, and other. I'm going to turn off my HVAC, so that annoying little sound, that's going to go away in about, oh, I don't know. My, it sounds like the HVAC takes a couple minutes, but it's going to get there, I promise. So, uh, story time with Greg. Let's read the, the flavor text here before I start gushing about the Stella a little bit. Before Stella began working for the Postal Service in Arkham, she knew two things with certainty. First, her parents made a mistake when they called her their son and gave her a boy's name. Uh, second, the house on the cliff in Kingsport whispered her true name, the name she chose for herself late at night, Stella. I don't know what her real name was, but uh, someone in the comments might be able to tell me that. Uh, delivering the mail six days a week in all kinds of weather wasn't an easy job, but Stella loved knowing that she was helping people connect with one another. Then she started finding the letters. At the end of her route, there was always one extra envelope in her bag. It was always addressed to her. It was always postmarked from Kingsport. And it always contained a letter with one typed word. Stella. Ooh, creepy. I got chills. All right. So uh, her little run through Innsmouth, or Innsmouth. I'm not in Innsmouth right now. I'm in Dunwich. But we started in Arkham. Uh, that, this little run through this campaign uh, very much went parallel with Silas until scenario six, really seven, or uh, Mytho Mythos Pack five. It'd just be easier that way. So uh, we uh, we started in the, again, I randomized. We started in the casino. It went very well there. I actually got Dr. Francis Morgan. So that was really nice. And then we went to the university. The janitor was buried at the bottom of the deck, so I never got a hold of the janitor. So that went very poorly. The students died. I had to add a tablet to the bag. Great. We go from scenario, well, not great. I mean, I would have liked to not have the students die. So then we went to scenario three, 
and we were in the museum. That went well. Found the Necronomicon. I randomized it again. The, ran the Necronomicon was destroyed. Went to the train. I really hate the train. It just... <laughs> The return to just makes that scenario bananas. I mean, the very first car was the one where I had to spend three action discarding cards just to get clues. And now, like, the freaking conductor is, like, on me. It Just so many things. Just, all right, we're, we're good. Moving on. So, died there, took a physical trauma. Great. Not great. But, you know, it is what it is. So, then we go to scenario five, or Mythos Pack three. And that was the, re, the um, when you're in Dumwich and you got Silas Bishop and all nine yards. That went really well, actually. And the amazing thing about that, I was able to get all seven clues in the hidden chamber just with the cards in my hand. It really worked out well. So by getting all seven clues, it prevented me from having to put the conglomeration of spheres and the hideous abominations encounter set into the deck for scenario seven which was huge uh, and then we went to undimensional unseen i killed two broods could not get the broods in the right place didn't have the right locations where i can get more clues on them to give myself a plus two for each clue so i only killed two i resigned fine and now we went to the hill i kid you not it took me four chances four tries to, to beat the hill so uh, and i think that's probably indicative that this deck is not built that great uh, it's also indicative if I got pretty unlucky, too. I, I was pulling Beast Thralls like it was no one's business. <laughs> so, and Stella is not great. That might have worked for Silas. Uh, Stella, her combat of a three and not having that ability to cycle skill cards to make sure she's getting maximum value out of them, it, it makes her a much different beast, and you need a lot more things to go well for her, which is, again, there's a reason why Silas was my number three investigator for true solo play, uh, and Stella was still kind of new to Stella. I mean, I Stella can make an argument to be somewhere in the top 10, maybe. Uh, personally, I would say no. Uh, I still think she's, as far as survivors go, she's still falling behind Ashcan Pete for me. Uh, she's still falling a little bit behind Yorick. Uh, and even like Patrice is interesting, as long as there's not a lot of hidden cards. I mean, there's a lot of survivors I like a little bit more than Stella. But... Here we are. So how did I build her deck? Which again, might be a little bit flawed considering my results in, <laughs> you know, going up that hill. Ugh. All right. So I'm just going to go through my skill cards, my assets, my events. These are all the level zero cards. And I'm going to go through my, my upgraded cards. Then we'll go through my weaknesses and my, the story assets that I have. And they get the unique cards. So uh, the skill cards, I have tons of skill cards with with stella i mean her she's coming in at three two three four right after she fails a skill test she can take an additional action during her turn so you do want to have some of those cards that are again if you fail you get some benefit but again, it's a hard way to to win a campaign when you're relying on failing right so you know it is what it is so we have perception we have an unexpected courage a manual dexterity two copies of guts i think one copy of guts i thought i had two copies of guts oh there he goes here's the other one it's hiding. All right, two copies of Guts. We have... Oh, I picked up some assets, too. There we go. We have... That's an event. We have Take Heart, Last Chance, Stunning Blow, Resourceful, and Survival Instinct. So it's a really nice array of skill cards there. Assets. We got the Mysterious Raven. We got... It's not a card I would normally have this late in the campaign, but the way I built Stella, I feel like it's really important for her right now. I got the old key ring. Again, it comes from the Stella Clark Investigator deck. got a lot of really good cards that came in there. We got some track shoes. We got a base... A level zero Gravedigger shovel, a knife, and a leather coat. I did have a Cherish Keepsake, but I have so much Horror Soak that I dropped that... I think I dropped it right coming into this with uh, the upgrade that I took for Scenario 8 or Scenario seven uh mythos pack six and then we have our events we got grit your teeth which is a really cool again it's if you're gonna play stella you gotta have at least a couple of cards that are relying on her failing so i got take heart already uh, which is again that skill card if you fail you get to draw two cards and you get two resources and then we have grit your teeth if you fail as you can play this as a fast action for one resource for the rest of the scenario or the rest of the round the scenario would be great the rest of the round you get plus one to each of your skills the remaining of the round so i got a couple people trickling in uh, Phoenix Knight says, you and a lot of people hate the train, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> I used to love that scenario. Steve's sitting here. Steve hated that scenario because he can never beat it. But I used to do very well with it, True Solo. I think it's one of the few scenarios that actually scales better, True Solo. And uh, the return to just really changed that scenario in a way that mm, just not a huge fan. Eric B., can't wait to see this. Nothing is stop just from delivering the mail. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Eric? Good to see you, man. All right. So we have... 
some events here. We got impro improvised weapon. I'm just trying to, it's a little bit of a desperation play. I need something that can do chunk damage. As you can notice, I don't have a fire axe. I really was going agility heavy. Let me evade things, which works well until you're on the hill and you pull a beast thrall and a devotee of the key and a crazy shoggoth. And then you're like, uh oh, I'm in trouble. So <laughs> that might have happened once or twice this afternoon. All right, that was getting ready for tonight. Emergency cash. We got to look what I found. We got a trial by fire. Again, set one of your skills to five for the turn. And then bait and switch is a really nice car with Stella, especially if you're going agility heavy. Man, get something to a different location can be really huge. And then live and learn. I do like live and learn a little bit better than lucky, just the way I play. All right, you don't need the resource for it. You get the plus two. There's a bunch of things. I think it's a little bit more uh, adaptable than lucky is, right? But they both definitely have their benefits. All right. Uh, trust me, when I if I have this in my hand and I have a resource and I fail by one or two, I'm going to wish I had lucky. But <laughs> it is what it is. So we have, what did I spend my XP on? So I have a fair amount of XP because the good thing about this this campaign is it balances nice. If you're struggling early, like if you don't get armor ties in your deck, you get two a bonus XP. If you die in the, what is it, scenario, if you die in a train, you get an additional XP. So me struggling a little bit in three and four or two and four specifically got a few extra xp which is really nice so i i upgraded peter Silvestre. Uh, you notice there's no allies oh exactly other than the mysterious raven mysterious raven yeah uh, the only there were no other allies so obviously that's not the way i built this deck so we got peter Silvestre, the level two i have alter fate which is, i think is a must-have card in the dumbest legacy expansion will to survive you saw how huge that was in the last scenario when i was silas I got a Brute Force and a Sharp Vision, and then we have the Red Glove Man. I did spend my last 5 XP on the Red Glove Man coming into this scenario. Red Glove Man is a, it's a favorite of mine going back to Dunwich. I don't take it all that often anymore because there's so many options on how to spend your XP right now. But fast, it costs 2. You get to upgrade 2 of your stats to 6, and it stays in play until the following, the end of the following Mythos phase. It's a very, very, very strong uh, asset. Cool. I realize there is some. All right, move that cord out of the way. Hopefully, not jostle the camera too much. Oh, perfect. That worked. Great. Now, I spent seven more XP on Quick Learning and Charisma, which are both permanent cards that do not count against your deck size. If you're gonna take the Red Glove Man, you better have Charisma, right? If you're gonna keep a card like the Mysterious Raven in your in your deck, you better have Charisma, right? So you definitely. I, I built this. I'm like, look, I'm gonna fail. I want some allies. I took all of the, the story assets, as you'll see, that I could. And so I'm just going to be like using my allies to soak up damage at hard. They die, and hopefully I'll have another one that can come in and hopefully I have the resources to afford that. One of the nice things with the regular man, it only costs three. And if you can if you compare Trial by Fire, which is a level zero card, but it costs three and you only get to upgrade one stat to a five for one turn, the regular man is so much better because it costs two. It's fast, so it's not taking an at Well, they're both fast, I guess, but it only costs two. It can soak damage and horror for the entire entirety of the time that it's in play, uh, and then it, it, you can upgrade two of your stats to six. That's a really nice. Uh, it's a really nice asset. Anyway, so that's charisma, red globe land. We're good. What did I spend this four XP on this thing called Quick Learner? Well, Quick Learner is a pretty bizarre card, and I assure you, I'm going to get tripped up with it at some point tonight. So someone has to keep me honest here. So with Quick Learner, during and before your first action of each of your each of your turns, each skill test you perform gets plus one difficulty. So if I wanted to do an investigate and the, the shroud is a two and it's the first action of my turn, well, that shroud's now a three, right? It works well with Stella because, again, if you fail that first action anyway, you just get an extra action. So there's no big deal. Now, obviously, you might not want to do an attack against an enemy with retaliate, you know, if, if it's going to be a harder test. But the first test I do, if I do a test in that first action, it's going to be plus one difficulty. Now, if I move or if I play a card or, or play an asset, put an asset in play, whatever, if I take a resource, if I take a card, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like, it's not like the first, it's not the first test I do on my turn. It's literally any test I do on the first action. Now, what's the benefit? Because that's a drawback, right? What's the benefit? Well, on the third action of each turn, the test I do has minus one difficulty. So you can really make that work to your advantage. And especially as Stella, if you have the extra action because you failed the test, so that would you could do that and still have one more action left. Like there's a lot of really nice interplay 
with quick learner and Stella's ability here. So uh, felt like that was a really, you know, it might as well be a unique asset card for her. Uh, the way I see it, it's not a card I would take with too many other investigators. Just uh, the math gets a little tricky. And again, there's other cards I would rather take. So I'm putting Quick Learner over here. I'm putting Charisma over here. I'm going to take, oh, I didn't go through my unique cards. Uh, so the story assets, I have Warren Rice survived the Domus Legacy. I took him. Zebian the Waitley survived the Domus Legacy. I took him. And Dr. Francis Morgan survived the Domus Legacy. I took him. Again, a lot of times I'm just using them for their icons if I don't have room to put them in play. Uh, and those icons can come in pretty big. I also don't mind having a slightly bigger deck because you're trying to avoid that beyond the threshold card where if your deck is empty, you lose because it's 10 damage and good luck taking that. I do have three weaknesses, unfortunately. Uh, three story weaknesses. Again, not not the, my unique weakness. I failed to train, so I got across time and space. I got internal injury, and I have chronophobia. That was I thought that was funny. Like I randomized this, and I basically took the two classic dumbest weaknesses. This gives you a direct damage every turn. This gives you a direct horror every turn until you spend two actions to get rid of them. Again, if you fail a test in the Mythos phase, it's nice because then you can get four actions. You can use two to, to discard these. And so there, there are definitely worse weaknesses I could have pulled than those two. What are my unique cards? Why do I still have four cards in my hand? There's only one unique card. Well, Stella has three unique cards. Because she fell so darn much, you have to have these. Um, Steve and I were having an interesting conversation yesterday about whether or not this is a little bit extreme compared to the average asset. I can't think of a unique asset that I think is stronger than Stella's. She basically has three cards that have three wild cards each. You, if the skill test fails, you cancel all effects of that failed test. So if I commit this to uh, a combat against an enemy with retaliate and I fail, they don't retaliate back against me. If I commit this to a test and I pull a bad token and it says put a clue on your location, I don't have to do that. It's really intense how that works and you get three of them. I mean, it's just nuts to me. I mean, there's that one, like, Seeker card, which I'm forgetting, which gives you three wild icons, and that only can be committed to a location where there's a clue. You have Survival Instinct, which has three wild icons. That can only be committed to a test when you're minus two. This is like, no, you can commit this to anything you want. It's nuts. It's nuts, nuts, nuts. I really like this card, and we have three of them, but again, with Stella, you are going to need them. And then what's the unique weakness? Well, Called by the Mists. This is more annoying than I thought it would be uh, when I first started playing with Stella. It's you put it into your play area. After you initiate a skill test with a difficulty of four or higher, you take a damage. That is one drawback with Stella. When you have this in play and you have Quick Learner, it's amazing how many times Quick Learner makes a test that would have only been a three, a four, and you're like, I have to take a damage every time. So you are looking to get rid of Called by the Mist when it comes out. Because, again, although you're a tank, seven... <laughs> Seven soaked does not last when you're relying on failing tests a lot. So since I have all my uh, pips, all my uh, advanced cards or upgraded cards uh, together, I'm just going to do a little bit of a pile shuffle with Stella, and then we'll go from there. So what's the narrative? Like, where are we at? How are we lost in time and space? What is time? What is space? Let's get all philosophical. Great. So we, if you don't forget, we were, for, for those of you who don't, who might forget, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But we were on top of Sentinel Peak. We killed, well, this was Silas. I didn't really, I just evaded him with Stella. So I evaded Seth Bishop on top of the peak. And then while he was so disoriented by my blazing speed of evading him, then I was able to get the last clue on Sentinel Peak, spent those two uh, those two clues, and I jumped into the rift that the Yaxothian cultists uh, had created on the top of Sentinel Peak as they're trying to usher Yaxothoth into the world to destroy all of us because they're crazy that's fine so here we are uh, I'm now in the lost in time and space scenario which is where Yogg Sothith himself is chilling and I'll read the flavor text here so all is one agenda 1a pathways of sound and color extend for an eternity in all directions dotted with an impossible architecture sorry dotted with impossible architecture and overgrown with alien wildlife the lines between objects are jagged and shifting, and your skin feels as if it were inside out. After you are moved to a location by an encounter card effect, take one horror. True survive. David Espinosa. Hey, what's up, David? How are you, man? Uh, yeah, I would definitely uh, need to take a closer look at that. <laughs> I, 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 know, I know I know that card. Hold on one second. That's going to drive me nuts. 
And where are my survivor cards? They're over there. Now, I'll take a look at that. I appreciate the, the heads up. So David Espinosa says that True Survivor Level 3 is really good for recovering signature cards. I will... Don't worry about it. Um, oh, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. And they're right to my left. True Survivor Level 3. What cost card is that, man? What cost is it? Rise to the Occasion. True Survivor. Alter Fate. Rabbit's Foot. How much does this sucker cost? Oh, here we go. Return three innate cards. Oh, that's cool. True Survivor Level 3. Return three innate cards from your discard pile to your hand. It's really, really nice. Cool. It's an event. Cost three. Uh, that is something to explore in a future playthrough for sure. So uh, all this one... One of the things that's weird about Arkham is they never... like They kind of have, but kind of haven't. Like The idea of what's a scenario card, what's an encounter card, the definitions get fuzzy. Uh, but basically, if anything moves you from one location to another, including the other, the act deck or the agenda deck, whatever, you have to take a horror as you go, right? So, and we'll see how that plays out. There's a lot of things that might move you in ways that you don't want to be moved, <laughs> and you'll just have to deal with it. So, out of this world, somehow you must find your way across this alien landscape in order to find the nexus that was described in Old Waitley's Tome. Uh, as an action, you can discard the top three cards of the encounter deck, choose a location discarded by this effect, and resolve its revelation ability. We need two clues to advance this. Now, I did replace... Yeah, Agenda 3A is a new version that comes with Return 2. There is a new version of Act 2, but that only comes into play if Silas Bishop survives, uh, or Seth, something happened with Seth Bishop, but we didn't... I think our ritual needs to be completed or something, uh, but I did not. Uh, that that did not trigger in this playthrough, so we're not going to worry about that card. I don't think I've ever had that card trigger, to be honest with you, in, in my playthroughs of the Return to. All right, so I'm going to shuffle these cards. Remember, I play the Return to variant where I take the original set and I take the new set. And I take the appropriate number. So in my hand right now, I have the Agents of Yog Sothith. And I have Yogg-Sothis Emissaries. Yogg-Sothis Emissaries come with a return to. There are four in each of those, so I have eight cards total. So I'm just going to take four and put them in the encounter deck for this turn, for this game. And then I have the Beyond and Beyond the Threshold. There's six in each. I'm going to shuffle them together, get all 12 of these, and I'm going to pull off six. On top of that, we're going to add the Sorcery Encounter set, which has six cards. We're going to add the Hideous Abominations a counter set which has three cards including our favorite conglomeration of the spheres because you know those weren't we we didn't have enough fun with them last week uh and then the bulk of this deck is going to be a massive encounter set that comes with the lost in time and space mythos pack two three four five six and a lot of those cards are going to be locations. The Return to in addition added three more locations to this deck, uh, which is super interesting. So you really have to pay... If you haven't gotten used to looking at locations and connections before, like by the time you play this scenario a couple of times, you better. <laughs> right? You just really need to. Uh, the other setup changes that we have is you start with Beyond Realms in play. Uh, so it has an encounter card back, but it's never shoveled in anywhere. It just starts in play. It comes with a return to, and it basically says, Yogg-Sothoth is immune to player card effects, cannot take damage, and cannot leave the beyond, the realms beyond. So this dude is just going to chill there the entire time. As an additional cost for you to leave realms beyond, test willpower or agility three. If you fail, cancel the effects of the move. Not good. Now, Stella's card could come really handy there, but again, it's only an agility three. I'm probably not going to be wasting Stella's card on that, right? Uh, forced, when a forced effect would move an investigator to another dimension, which is this location here, instead, you move them to the realms beyond, and you cannot cancel that effect. So, uh, cannot be canceled. So, if something were, if I were going to fail a test with Stella's card, and it said, oh, cancel that, this would override Stella's card. So, I would still have to move there. Yog Sothith is massive. Hunter retaliate. He has plus six per investigator health, so he actually has 10 health. He cannot be evaded and cannot make attacks of opportunity. Uh, there is a triggered ability here when he attacks you, instead of taking up to X horror, because he does one damage and five horror, uh, you can instead discard the top X cards from your deck. Then, if you have no cards in your deck, you are driven insane. That's fun. <laughs> Sound of these, you know, optional. We're good. All right. Another dimension unfettered by reality. You gape in disbelief at the swirling colors and alien angles surrounding you. This is true madness. It has a shroud value of a six. I don't think we'll be investigating that anytime soon. Now, I do want to pile shuffle this. And then we'll be ready. 
Um, so you notice I have the 18. 18? Yeah, math is hard. Yep. I think there's 18. There was 15 that started me out of three. So you yeah, 18 chaos tokens that will start in the bag. So it was the original 15, and then we had to add three. You add a minus three in scenario. I think before the train you do that, you add a minus five before you go up Sentinel Peak. And then we had to add the tablet because, again, those poor students were ravaged by some alien beast thing on their college campus. I mean, the parents spent good money, sent them to school, think they're going to be safe, and then they get ripped apart by a humanoid dog. It's a rough, rough life. All right. That goes here. We got... I'll put that on camera right there. We're going to take these 18 tokens... Make sure there's 18 before I put them in. Done. And we will drop them in the bag. Done. I'm drawing my opening hand. The one thing that always fascinating to me about like how you're supposed to play this game that I never really do is you're supposed to draw your hand in mulligan before you do the scenario setup. Um, interesting. I don't know. <laughs> but it just as a, as a point of order... Uh, I guess this is not, I should have been doing this in different orders, but we're, we're going to just go with this now. Let me put this here. That's probably more user-friendly. Got it. So I'm going to draw up five cards. My deck is really big. So we got a Altered Fate, a Take Heart, an Emergency Cachet, and an Improvised Weapon, and a Live and Learn. That is a bunch of nonsense. I want assets. I'm tempted to... Maybe. Yeah, I'm just going to drop all of these. Dropping those four, I mean, uh, look what I found is nice, but I'm going to drop all these. I'll keep the emergency cash, especially since I have charisma, and we'll see what I pull now. We get will to survive, grave digger shovel, overpower, and brute force. So I can kill an early enemy. That's not terrible, I guess. But definitely have liked a few more assets um i have like six allies and i pulled zero in nine cards so there's that uh phoenix knight the setup order never made sense to me but yep phoenix knight phoenix knight i am with you phoenix knight and i agree that the setup order doesn't make any sense <laughs> but you know what do we know um so i am going to with my first action I think I try to get a location and play. I mean, the Gravedigger Shovel would be nice to get out, but I also have Brute Force on my hand and with, with Overpower. I don't really need the, the money right now. So I'm going to do this ability on this card, my first action. And again, this if I was going to do a test, this would be the time that the test would have plus one difficulty, but I'm not doing a test right now, so I'm going to discard these three cards. Now, notice, when a card is just discarded and you put it in play from there... You do not have to carry out the, wait, oh, you do have to carry the, right. You, it, you only have to carry out the revelation ability because it says on here, right? But any other card is just discarded here. You don't have to do the revelation ability because it's just discarded. You're not drawing it. So uh, you choose to take it out of the discard pile and put it in play. So I'm putting Prismatic Cascade into play with my first action. Now, what's the revelation ability on Prismatic Cascade? Revelation, put, put it into play and discard a random card from your hand. Well... <laughs> That's not ideal. I'm going to roll. I roll the oh, I roll the five. Bye bye brute force. And I didn't want that anyway, except you know all the ways that I really did. That's fine. And that comes into play with three clues, a shroud value only of a two, which isn't horrible, especially for my measly investigative a two. So uh, a force after the last clue of prismatic cascade is removed, you have to discard it. Well, why is that a problem? Well, notice. Prismatic Cascade, another dimension is connected to Prismatic Cascade. It has the green circle. But when I'm here, I can't move back to another dimension. So if this is discarded, well, if this just goes away, where do I go? Well, if, if everything else is gone, look at this force ability. When a location leaves play, move each investigator and unengaged enemy at that location to another dimension cannot be canceled. And then this says, actually, don't you don't go to another dimension and return to, you go to Realms Beyond, and then I got to deal with the Oxothoth. So I need to be really careful about being at a location that gets discarded because number one, I'm going to end up with that jerk. And number two, I'm going to take a horror because of what's on the agenda. So a lot of things to keep in mind here. But I like the shroud value and I like what else is going on. So I'm going to move here in my second action. Brian, just wanted to wish you good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Brian just says, don't go insane and wish me good luck. 
And Lazy asked if I tend to play this true solo. How does this game more recent cycles? I only have two cores in the Dunwich in the Dunwich, but I heard that cycles are much harder. I two handed now. Yes. Uh Lazy, the um I I I feel like I just insulted you, but I don't mean to. <laughs> so Lazy, the uh it it does scale not great for true solo in the later cycles. Uh, I find circle undone. Scenarios three and four, uh, you might as well just skip and just take too hard and just call it a day. I mean, and, and then go to scenario five. I, I just, I really just like what they did with those two scenarios. Um, in um, they just don't scale well for one, even two, they don't scale that great. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, as far as Dream Eaters, Dream Eaters is tough for me because I love Dream Eaters B, and I think that actually does play very well true solo. Dream Eaters A, I just. I'm very disappointed with Dream Eaters A because it, it's awful for True Solo and it's probably not that great for two players either. Um, just the way the hidden cards work out, there's a search mechanic in the last scenario that, you know, in Dunwich scenario, in the when you're at the university, it scales. It's like if you're training True Solo, discard more cards. They didn't do a similar thing with Dream Eaters A, which I don't know why. It just seemed like a pretty obvious thing they would need to do. Um, so I really don't play Dream Eaters that much because Dream Eaters A to me is that broken for True Solo. But I this this campaign, Carcosa, Forgotten Age, it's swingier. You know, you might start a lot of campaigns you don't finish, but if you're fine with that, I, I love playing True Solo. I find it more immersive and more thematic for me. But I also understand why people really just love playing this game two-handed if they don't mind the longer games and the more upkeep, right? So it's just there's always a trade-off. So Dream Eaters A, especially for, oh yeah, Phoenix Knight, Dream Eaters 4A is just garbage. I just, I, I'm so, you're touching my, that and the train, man, can I, let's talk about happier things. <laughs> let's talk about happier things. So yeah, I'm I'm very eager for the return twos for Dream Eaters, because I assume, I assume <laughs> that they're going to do something to address some of the issues in the initial iteration. All right. Third action. What am I going to do? So, how bad is this encounter card? I'm actually looking right on the screen here. So, minus one for each extra dimensional location in play is a skull. I have one. So, the skull's minus one is nice. The cultist is real. Another token. If you fail, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck into a location card and put that location into play and move there. Um, that's a little rough because, again, that will give you a horror. Minus three for the tablet. I don't have to worry about the elder thing. Uh, minus three for the tablet. If the oxide is in play, it attacks you after the skill test. That's super gross, so hopefully I don't pull that very often. Uh, but I think the thing I'm going to do is try to take advantage of Quick Learner. I'm going to do a 3 to a 1. No, I'm sorry, a 2 to a 1 because the, the difficulty is reduced by 1. And hopefully I get lucky, and if I fail, I'll have another action to go. Sorry, I don't do <laughs> Phoenix Knight says he doesn't do happy. <laughs> uh, lazy, uh, not even at... I don't, you'd have, I've only played it two, once or twice. Twice. Steve says you played it twice. That sounds about right. It scales a little rough at two. I, Dream Eaters A does. Dream Eaters B is super fun. I, it's probably, as far as four scenarios go, the problem is there's so much like interplay that you do feel like you're not getting the full experience if you only play B. But Dream Eaters B is a, a riot for me. I, I love the theme. I love the, the enemies. I love a lot of stuff that's going on with B. For sure. All right. Uh, a circle and done. Yeah, two is three and four is just those those two scenarios are just brutal, brutal, brutal. So I am doing a two to a one. Can I be a quick learner and hopefully not pull a tablet? I feel a tablet coming on. Steve, Steve feels a tablet going on. I can tell. What do we get? Plus one. Woo! We get a clue. All right. We got one clue, kids. On our way, crushing it right now. <laughs> I think it took me like seven turns to get a clue last three weeks ago. So this this is a step in the right direction. So what's going on? I'm drawing a we're enemy phase, no enemies, okay phase. I'm drawing a card. I get perception. We're taking a resource. I have so many resources and nothing to spend them on. That's not great. Uh, meet those phase. One doom on the agenda. Encounter card. What do we got? What did I discard? Oh, I discarded two beyond the veils. Oh, you guys saw me pile shuffle too. That's really, that's not a bad thing. All right. Tear through space is a location. Put it into play is the revelation effect, but it also surges. Now, tear through space is connected to the prismatic cascade. And it's got a shroud value of a one and one clue. I mean, how amazing is that? The problem is the forced event, the forced 
effect is at the end of the round you either have to place a doom on territory space or discard it and again just like prismatic cascade also not connected to another dimension so we're kind of like on the stepping stool looking for where the next place we're going to step is uh because we can't go backwards and we don't want to go there <laughs> so uh that surges what do i get now vast expanse if there are no extra dimensional locations in play vast expanse gains surge Otherwise, test willpower X, where X is the number of extra dimensional locations, which is two. That's not extra dimensional, right? Yeah, that's other world. And for each one you fail by, take one horror. Man, I really need a Peter Silvestre, or I don't know, any ally that can soak up some of this horror. But I'm testing a three. This is not the first action, so quick learner doesn't apply here. I'm testing a three to a two because there's two extra dimensional locations in play. And what am I going to pull? Boom, minus three, I fell. So I fell by two. I take two horror, which again, if I get Peter out, I'm not really that upset about. This goes away, but what's the good news? I failed the test. Not upset about that because now, since I failed the skill test, I can take an initial action during my turn. So it doesn't matter where in the round I failed the test. I failed it in the mythos on my turn. I now have an extra action. So I have four actions, kids, which could be good. I'm gonna put a Gravedigger Shovel in play. And that gives me a five combat if I fight with that, which could be nice. That was my first action. My second action, I think I see. Mm. Yeah, I'll, move. I'll try to get that clue. I'll, I'll play this now while I can. I'm going to play Emergency Cash because at some point I should get some allies in my hand, which will be necessary. I'm going to now, uh, with my third action, is I'm doing a a two to a one. I am going to do perception. At some point, you know, I'm trying to, if I pull the tablet now, I'll feel like a genius. But I really want to get another card in my hand because I'm looking for some allies right now. Of course, I have four weaknesses in there too. So what's going to come first, a weakness or an ally? So I'm doing a, a test of a, it's a two plus two, so a four uh, to a two minus one. So it's a four to a one. Lots of math. Bam! I pulled a plus one. What a waste of perception. I pull a card because of that. Since I was successful, I get a clue. Now, I do not want to get that last clue because then I would have to move somewhere and that's not going to help me. Uh, I did pull an ally, with Dr. Francis Morgan. He can be a nice little damage soak. Still need a horror soak. And I do have two clues. So I'm gonna, I have one more action because, again, I failed the test in the Mythos phase. I'm going to look at this act. So as I advance, we go to an act uh, 1B. A light shimmers in the distance, and you head toward it to investigate. The wispy light drifts away from you, floating through the realm's strange gateways, ascending looping staircases, and crossing through barriers you dared not cross earlier. With little chance of finding the nexus on your own, you follow the light, hoping it is guiding you in the right direction. Put the set aside, the edge of the universe location, into play. Ding! All right, here's the edge of the universe. Edge of the universe, nothing could have possibly prepared you for this. It is beautiful and terrible to behold. You must have at least two clues in order to, in order to move to the edge of the universe. So you don't have to spend them. You know, it's not like we get to the top of the Sentinel Peak. You have to spend those two clues to get in. But if you don't have two clues on you, you ain't allowed in. This is the way that goes. What do we got? Have you ever house ruled extra actions for True Solo? Uh, Brian, has I ever house ruled anything for True Solo? I generally don't house rule anything <laughs> because I'm, you know, a little neurotic. But uh, I totally understand that people do. That's fine. I mean, especially in Circle Undone. Or if you're learning a campaign and you're playing True Solo, knock yourself out, dude. Like, whatever makes this game more fun for you, whatever makes any game more fun for you, just do it. Like, I, I don't understand... Uh, you know, people that, that have a problem with, with stuff like that. But yeah, I, I personally do not. All right, that's a play. I have one more action. I think I put in Francis Morgan, and then next turn I can try to get more locations into play, and we'll go from there. So, oh, act two, 2A, you continue to follow the Wisp of Light through the treacherous landscape, though the treacher, treacherous landscape makes a difficult quarry to chase. Discard the top three cards in the encounter deck, so it's the same ability as on the the same action ability as on the Act One, and then objective if an investigator enters the edge of the universe, advance. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, cool. Uh, with my third action, I'm going to spend three resources and get myself an ally in play. It's not the one I would, not the ally of dreams, but <laughs> we we need to start doing stuff like that. Great. 
Enemy phase, no enemies. Upkeep phase, I'm drawing a card. It is sharp vision, don't hate that. And I'm taking a resource. Mythos phase. So again, I can't enter there until I have two clues. If I take the clue here, this is this card and I move, get moved there and I take a horror, so that's not good. Uh, at the end of the round, before the Mythos, at the end of the round, I have to put a Doom on there. Uh, or discard it. I'm just going to... I'll put a Doom on there for now, and then I'll just have it discarded next turn. That might actually be a good way to get another clue. And it won't advance the agenda unless there's something that puts an extra Doom on the agenda, which I don't think there is in this encounter deck. Yeah, there's no Ancient Evils or Resurgent Evils to worry about there. So we go to the Mythos phase, we put this Doom in play, it's the third Doom in play, and we draw out a top and a counter card. What is it? It is the Steps of something. <laughs> Yarghurl. Yeah, I said that right. So you put the Steps of Yarghurl into play and then draw the topmost Madness card in your discard pile. I mean, anyone who heard me say what I just said probably thinks I'm a little mad anyway, so this works out fairly well. I do not have a Madness card in my discard pile, so I do not need to worry about that, which is nice. All right, this has a Force ability. When you believe the steps of Roar Girl, test uh, two willpower. If you fail, you shuffle it into the counter deck instead of moving to your original destination. When that's shuffled in, again, you get moved there, but actually get moved there, and I'm going to keep saying that because, you know, I like, be, like to be thorough. So that's a little rough. There's only one clue on there. And it is connected to the edge of the universe. So if I'm trying to be strategic, I can, this turn, so I didn't fail a test, I only have three actions this turn. But if I can go here, get this clue, and then move back, and then next turn I can go here, try to get this clue, and then I'll have the ability to go there. I think that will help, but I am going to need something to help me with those, uh, that. I definitely don't want Tear Through Space to be on the board by the end of this this uh this what are we doing this round right so i need to make this go away because i do not want the agenda to advance because nothing good happens when the agenda advances the problem is even a two to a one isn't great but if i go and i fail then i have a, i'll have an extra action so that will that will actually be fine so let me try to get this clue and come back to th these are connected which is nice so i'll be able to come back to prismatic cascade and then these are connected too so this this is a nice little location. So being able to pull that as my encounter card, big fan. So I'm going to move there with my first action. I'm investigating a two to a one. I could also just like discard Grave Digger Shovel. The, only, the worst case scenario for me would be pulling a Cultist. The There are three extra... I mean, the Skulls are a whopping minus three, so that's super fun. I think it's... The Grave Digger Shovel, I'm going to probably want the Grave Digger Shovel for something like the Steps of your Girl. I might commit Sharp Vision. The, the reality is that if I fail, this one I get, I'll get on my third action, it'll be a zero. So I think it's worth the risk because then I'm guaranteed to succeed on the third action. And I will have a fourth action if I fail on my second action. And then I'll be able to move back to Prismatic press, Escape. So again, this is like manipulating Quick Learner as you go is really important. So we're doing a two to a one. Anything but a cultist. There's only one of you in the bag, so I just don't want to see your ugly mug. A minus three, so I failed. I get an extra action. My third action, the difficulty goes down by one, so I'm doing a two to a zero. Quick learner for the win. As you can see, the synergy with quick learner and Stella, it's like bananas. Uh, so now I get the minus one I needed the first time. That's my third action. I have a fourth action because I failed on my second action, and I'm going to move back to Prismatic Cascade. Done. All right, we are going to go to the enemy phase, no enemies. We're going to do the upkeep phase. I'm going to draw a card. I get manual dexterity, and I'm going to take a resource. At the end of the round, I'm not putting a doom on the tear through space, so that's just going to go away. And now we go to the mythos phase. We put a third doom on the agenda, and we draw an encounter card. What is it? It is an interstellar traveler. <laughs> All right, so Interstellar Traveler makes things really complicated. So you can spawn him at any extra dimensional location. So I don't need to put him where I am. Like he is spawn instructions any. So I can put him where I am because it's extra dimensional, or I can put him on a step of your rural, which is also extra dimensional. 
The problem with the, the Interstellar Traveler is that when he enters a location, you flip one clue in that location to its doom side and place it on Interstellar Traveler or place one doom on Interstellar Traveler if there are no clues in the location. So if I put it here, well, guess what? The last clue is gone. And then I have to move to there, which is a non-starter. And he will keep putting doom in play as long as he's around, which is really gnarly. Or I can put him here, but then now my second clue, which is going to let me get in here, is now bye-bye. So none of this is great. I think I put him there. I now will, I'll go there and I'll have to figure out another way to deal with things. I am going to have to defeat him, which means... Ugh. I mean, Gravedigger Shovel gives me a 6 to a 4, which isn't terrible. When he does damage, though, he's doing 2 horror and a damage. I'm not worried about the damage soak. I am getting a little worried that I don't have any horror soak here. And I, I think it's too early to, to be messing with uh, Will to Survive. I could just evade him fairly easily, though. It's a 4 to a 2. There's only two extra-dimensional locations in play. The, the biggest part of all this that, that stinks is that I lost my extra clue. So I'm going to have to now get another location to play. So let me go here with my first action. This dude engages with me because he just can't get enough. He's only a hunter, does not have retaliate. If I fight him, Francis Morgan gives me plus one. The, the Gravedigger Shovel gives me plus one, plus two. So I'm doing a six to a four. Remember that the skulls are back to minus two, so that's not horrible. And if I fail, I'll have two more actions anyway. So I'm going to do a six to a four. If I can shovel this alien crab thing to death, we'll see. Minus one, so that's one damage. And since I succeeded, I guess the debate is, do I try to attack him again, or do I evade him and then just plan on killing him next turn? I don't, that two horror, I mean, horror could really start adding up, especially if I get hung up with the Yogg Sothoth at some point. So I will try to evade him. It'll be a four to a two, and if I fail, I'll have another action because Stella's a beast. Right. Steve reminded me, quick learner, it's actually a four to a one, which is even better. And if I fail, I will uh, have another action. I pull the zero, so the Interstellar Traveler is just evaded. Man, I wish it was like a, I mean, I wish it was like the, the, the police in Excelsior Hotel or something where it's like if you, if you defeat it, you can take a flip it back to its clue side. I mean, just really, really brutal. It's a really brutal enemy. Um, so hopefully, I don't pick another enemy because I don't know how I would really deal with more than one. So enemy phase, this dude's evaded. Upkeep phase, he readies. We're going to uh, draw a card. It is neither rain nor snow. We take a resource. Now the steps of yard roll, remember, only applies to me if I go to leave it, which I'm not going to leave it just yet. I am going to have I am going to have to leave it, get a clue somewhere, and then go back to it. So that's not ideal, but we'll figure that out as we go. So we the nice thing about him coming to play when he did is we were going to advance to meet those deck anyway. So all the Doom goes away because we add a fourth Doom to the agenda. There's five Doom in play. The Doom threshold is only four. We go to Act or Agenda 1B. Shuffle the Encounter Discard Pile into the Encounter Deck. Then discard all cards from the top until a location is discarded. The Lead Investigator resolves that location's revelation effect. Um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't take that hard because I, I, I forgot about this. So check campaign log. We did fail to save the students. A huge canine creature, alien to your eyes and yet familiar, appears before you. The creature rushes forward and you prepare to fend it off, but to your surprise, it runs through you towards a building that wasn't behind you moments before. Derby Hall from the Miskatonic University. The creature bursts through the building's front door and you hear screams of panic from inside followed by the crunch of snapping bones and cries of pain each investigator takes one heart Done. so i am up to three on my investigator card peter save me i need peter so bad yeah we just i did make sure i pulled the card all right so that is done i need to discard cards from the top of the deck until the location is revealed i'd love to get rid of a bunch of enemies oh yithian stargazer bye you think Star Seeker's gone? Fast Expanse, Offer of Power, 
visions of futures past beyond the veil there we go this is nice so we got the towering luminosity so towering luminosity is a it's also green so it is connected to the steps of drug control it has a three uh shroud it has four clues you could put the towering luminosity into play and either place one doom on it or take two damage i will gladly take two damage put it on dr francis morgan what else would i do with him and if forced after you fail a test while at this location you must either flip one clue on towering luminosity to its doom side or discard it so this is another one of the locations there are three locations that came with a return to it's very dynamic i very much like it and i very much like that it is connected to where i am and hopefully that will really help now remember that was just part of resolving agenda 1b we now have to re read agenda 2a past present and future as you cross this realm you catch occasional glimpses of reality sense scenes from old memories more recent visions from the past few days and sometimes even events that you do not remember ever happening same thing after you are removed you take a horror now we draw on a counter card we're still in the mythos phase terror from behind choose asset event or skill i will choose asset i have zero assets so that worked out fairly well Again, you, you just dis, you choose asset event or skill and then you discard all the cards in your hand that match that. It's really brutal in a multiplayer game. Solo, it's, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. So I still have this dude with me, don't I? Oh, the joys. So if I go to fight him now, it will be a six to a five because it's plus one because he's a quick learner. I could do overpower. If I lose, yeah, I'm still like freaked out by, <laughs> I'm freaked out by the skull and the cultist, and I'm freaked out by the tablet. Like they're both in my head. So I'm gonna do grave digger shovel plus Dr. Francis Morgan plus overpower. So I'm doing a billion to a four. It's not really a billion. What is it? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight to a five because a quick learner. I mean, I do have neither rain or sleep, but whatever. Uh, minus three. Oh, yeah. Clean living, kids. So that's another damage. So I did an eight to a five. I succeeded. I draw a card because over power. I get alter fate. Not terrible. Uh, now I'm going to do a six to a four. How many extra dimensional locations are there? There are three. So the skulls are, of course, minus three. I'll do a six to a four, though. And just the mass is that much better so six to a four we'll see what happens if i fail i get another action minus one actually the interstellar traveler is super dead all right that was my third action my second action my third action i'm gonna move i'm gonna move here i when i would leave so before i actually move when i would leave i have to do this test it is a three to a one because uh the steps have that because i'm in the third action phase so um, it's a little risky i have neither rain nor snow i don't love this but i think the right play is to make sure i pass this to the extent i can because if that gets shuffled in then i'm stuck on there and hopefully i'll just have a, a, another another rain or snow or something or a gu i have two guts i mean i'll have other things to help me with that test in the future so i'm doing a three to a one it's actually a six to a one so i am 17 out of 18 to win so this is when i pull the tablet or the the tentacles bam minus five Woo! clean living all right <laughs> minus five six to a one we succeed Wow, I needed every bit of that and that and made that work. Great. Um, oh, you know what? The nice thing about now that rain or snow is it also it would have canceled. So had I pulled the template, I would have, I would have, it would have actually canceled that out. I think that's how those that two cards would would interplay. Cool. So now I'm at towering luminosity. My turn is over, and there's four clues there, and I'm sitting there with the sharp vision in my hand. So maybe we can do some things there to to get. A couple of those clues and yeah i'll try to get two if i can and then i'll i'll just have some extras which can definitely come in handy so so i'm going to basically have to do this move back to here and then move here and hopefully i have something that allows me to pass that test when i try to move into the edge of the universe all right enemy phase no enemies upkeep phase drawing a card it's take heart don't mind that and we'll take a resource 
lots of resources. I would love to spend three of them on one Peter Sylvester. So one, one thing with my build, which I think is not why it's not the greatest build I've ever done, is that I didn't really... I'm not a huge doubles guy. I don't take like 15 doubles like some people. Um, but I, I did really take very, very few doubles in this build. So that my deck consistency isn't what you would necessarily want if you're playing optimally. All right. So this goes here for the Mythos phase. We draw a top and counter card. Be a location. Oh, it is the Unstable Vortex. It's the other one, man. You guys saw me pile up this. This is nuts. The Unstable for Vortex. Put Unstable Vortex into play and discard one copy of Tear Through Space. If able, there are no copies of Tear Through Space. Force at the end of your turn, if you were at Unstable Vortex, you must either draw the top card of the Encounter deck or shuffle Unstable Vortex into the Encounter deck. It is not connected to Tower and Luminosity. And it will just go there. It just has one clue. It's connected to the Steps of Yarbrawl. And it's connected to the Moon and the Comma look really similar to me. All right, no, those are different. Those are the Moon. So it's connected to... Yeah, it's connected to Steps of Yard Draw, and it's connected to the Edge of Universe, and uh, I think it's connected to... That's also a moon. Yeah, I don't know what that exactly is, but that's fine. Cool. No enemies except for the giant ancient one chilling out of the way. Oh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> uh, Phoenix Knight is reminding me that Yogg-Sothis is looming large like the Jabba the Hutt blob that he is. All right, I'm going to do. Man, I do have the Drave River Shovel. I'll probably save it. I just want to get one of those clues. So the reality is, my first test this round is going to be a two. My first action, if I try to ex investigate, it's going to be a two to a three. If I do sharp vision, that gets me up to a five to a three. Which it's actually a four because a quick learner. So I think my first action that doesn't make the most sense. I mean, obviously, if I fail, I can get the minus. But I, I again, I'm, I, every time I pull a token out of that bag, I'm tempting fate in a way that I don't love. Uh, so I'm going to draw a card. My first action. Oh, Peter! Oh, Peter! I love you so much. All right, we're going to put Peter into play with my second action. That's huge. That makes me happy. And then my third action, we're going to investigate. So again, it's a third action. So the shroud value actually goes down. So if I get lucky here and I pull a minus one, I can actually get two of those clues, which is part of why I did it this way. So I'm going to contribute sharp vision. It's now a shroud value of a two because the test is one less. So I'm doing a two. This is a basic investigate action. So I get two more intellect. So I have an intellect of a five going against the three, which becomes a two, five to a two. A minus one or a zero, I can take two clues. A minus three or a minus four, I take one. Either way will work for me. Just don't give me the tentacles. Minus five. <laughs> minus five is not what I wanted. So that's womp womp. Uh, I get an extra action though, so that's a thing. Phoenix is about to make sure. Uh, Phoenix Knight, yeah, about, no no joke, no joke. Phoenix Knight, that about time you actually they showed up after just like you know everyone trying to ushering in for the entire thing. Man, um, well that was a really giant bummer. I do have another action, but I'm doing a two to a three. I, man, I you know I I I had time, I have will to survive. Which can really help later. I think I I use a shovel, although I, I really hate doing it. Oh, after you fail a test, so I did fail a test, so I have to flip this to a doom side. That's a thing. <laughs> so before I fail any more tests, we're gonna just guarantee that I don't fail a test. Uh, did I fail a test in the mythos phase? No, we got unstable vortex. So yeah, it's oh, it's only yo yeah, you fail this while any test while at this location, not even an investigation test. That's bananas. All right, I'm taking that clue, doing it the guaranteed way. Um, that minus five was really unfortunate. Because, yeah, I think I was 16 out of 18 to get at least one clue there. Oh, man, that's brutal. Okay, yeah, Will to Survive would come in handy if I if I need to. I was just trying to save the, the shovel for elsewhere. And also now my combat is minus two across the board. But I, I don't think I have a choice but to use a Grave Digger, grave digger shovel there. And uh, we'll see. Oh, wait. When did I kill the 
Interstellar Traveler. Was that last turn? I should have another card in my hand because Dr. Morgan should have exhausted and I would draw a card and it's guts. That's fine. Because uh, I, yeah, I did not, when you kill an enemy when you have Dr. Morgan, um, so nothing else happened. So that was really easy to reconstruct. So I would just, I would have had Peter one turn earlier, which is fine. All right. So what's happening now? So that's the end of my turn. Enemy phase. Again, only big ugly is over there. Upkeep phase. We're drawing a card. Bait and switch. That's a good card to have, especially since I lost my shovel and we take a resource. Meet those phase. This is the third doom and play because again, I failed this test. Hopefully I did not fail another test. What is it? Oh, the conglomeration of spheres. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you more than anything else in this world. Da -da 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 -da. All right. Um, that's really bad. Super hard to evade, too. So, conglomeration of spheres. He's not elite. I could push him somewhere. But we're just gonna, he's going to be chasing me around all the time. That's about how that goes. If I play Will to Survive, I can evade, move, move. Guarantee myself I pass that, which I don't hate. But then I'm probably going to Will to Survive to get clues later. If I try to evade him, it's a 5 to a 5 at the first test, and then it'll become a 5 to a 4. But I also have Manual Dexterity, so I can make it a... There's four extra dimensional locations in play. That's not great. Yeah, so the skull's minus the max is minus five. Six. Will to survive is not the craziest thing I've ever done right now. <clears throat> it's just gonna make getting clues later a little more difficult. The question is do I wanna push him somewhere? Not really. Because playing bait and switch is not really there's nowhere I can really move him that's connected that would make a lot more sense than where he is right now so i think i do will to survive prefer i would prefer to use it on a on test where i'm getting clues but i think that this is just what i'm gonna have to do right now yes the steers right if i if i do a the agility test and i fail then this becomes another well we're the agenda is advancing anyway mm -hmm. That almost doesn't matter. Oh man, I'm so torn. I, I just really hate wasting will to survive here. I could use these icons, and that gives me a eight to a five, but I'm still minus four with the skulls, which is just ridiculous. I could use take heart too, and then I get the extra action that way. Let me gamble. I'm gonna do a five. I'm gonna. I gotta say, both of I mean, my my ability to get clues is so limited with Stella that I'm just. I'm really hesitant to use Will to survive right now. So I'm doing a five to a five and just hoping I don't pull anything that has a picture on it. Minus two. I failed. Fine. Take heart. So I benefit. I lose, but I also get two cards. I get a mysterious raven and a live and learn. That's a nice draw and two resources. So that works out fairly well. Now, we are doing a 5 to a 4. Really want to succeed. The fact that the skull is minus 4 is really no bueno. Uh, so I, I failed the test. This becomes a doom. And I'm going to commit... This guy's engaged with me. I'm going to commit manual dexterity. And I'm committing this. So I'm doing a uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to a 4. And notice I'm just using bait and switch for the icon. I'm not using it for the event. Bam. Minus two. I draw a card because of manual dexterity. I get the old key ring. That's nice. He's evaded. My third action, I haven't failed the test. I only have one more action. I move there. And the next turn, I have to figure out how to leave those steps to get here. But I think I'm really happy. Oh, wait. I have one more action. Right, I, failed. I did fail the test. Oh man, I'm scared. That so would be doing a four to a two. I can make it a six to a two. I think I do it. I don't. Yeah, I, if I'm not doing a six to a two, <laughs> then I should. I mean, I, I how many more times did I pull the minus five? Right. All right, we're trying to go to the edge of the universe, kid. Steve talked me into it, because this doesn't work. Blame him. 
Oh, man. I was like all gun shy. That minus five is so ugly. Oh, let's go. Minus four. Good. Good, good. Guts. I get a card. Man, I am not picking my uh, weaknesses, which is also not bad. And I move to the edge of the universe. So I have two clues. You must have at least two clues in order to move. We know that investigators at the edge of the universe cannot draw cards during the upkeep phase, which is fine because it's all weaknesses anyway. Two clues here. I enter the edge of the universe. So what's happening here? We advance the act. Boom. You reach an impossibly dense pitch black void and realize that this place is where all of reality, all that is, I'm sorry, all that, yeah, all that is and all that ever will be ends. In its center, you see a minuscule rift suspended just out of reach. When you peer through the tear, you are surprised to see the peak of Sentinel Hill. Somehow you've reached the other side of the rift. Now you must find a way to close it for good. Cool. And the nice thing is the shroud value of a two, and I, I just picked up my old key rings. So that's going to go fairly well for me. So we go to act three. We read this. Close the rift. The unearthly stones of the ground are inscribed with some sort of seal. Approaching them causes a voice to enter your mind, speaking in an alien tongue. Discard the top three cards with the same ability to get more locations out. Only investigators at the edge of the universe may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. That number is three. So I have two. Just need one more, which is fine. And we're good to go. So enemy phase, upkey phase. This dude readies. That stupid conglomeration is going to be a pain for the rest of the game. I'm going to draw a card. Oh, I cannot draw a card during the upkeep phase. Do not, I lied. No drawing cards. And I get a resource. So many rules everywhere, man. All right. Meet those phase. Third doom on the agenda is the fifth doom in play. So the agenda advances. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Then discard cards from the top until a location is discarded. The lead investigator resolves that location's revelation effect. Check campaign log. Uh, right, so let me do that before I forget. Check campaign log. If at least one name is recorded under Sacrifice to Yog Sothoth, read the following. You hear a familiar voice calling out to you, and you enter an impossibly shaped building of cracked stone. No, don't, the voice cries. You rush toward the voice down a set of steep, narrow stairs until reaching the bottom. You find yourself in the hidden chamber from Dunwich. Bound by shackles, you see those you failed to save, bloodied and maimed. A creature with a man's face feeds from a corpse on the ground. The head of the corpse turns to face you and a sharp pain stabs your heart. Each investigator test willpower two. Because uh, I had two died. Unfortunately, Dr. Armitage didn't make it. And, you know, sad. And I have Zebulon Waitley, the other. Earl Sawyer is the other one that didn't make it. So I'm testing willpower two. And for each point an investigator fails by, that investigator takes one damage. So I have to test a four to a two. I don't think I'm going to bolster that. The nice thing is this is in the Mythos phase, so if I fail it, it does trigger my extra action during my turn. So 4 to a 2, minus 3, I failed by 1, which is beautiful, because I get to take a damage, which I'm going to put on Dr. Morgan here. And I do get that extra action, so I'll put that there to remind me of that. Great. Now I have to reshuffle the... I did that. We're going to put a location into play. It's a tear through space. Now, we discard from the top. The surge doesn't trigger because it was discarded and put into play from the discard pile, right? So it's different than pulling it from the top of the encounter deck. It has one clue on it, and it's just going to chill out in no man's land. All right, act three, close the rift. Oh, I already read that. Right, this was the agenda. So much reading. Story time with Greg continues, breaking through version two. Throughout the warped, the, throughout this warped dimension, no matter where you travel, there is a haunting shape in the distance. At first, it appears as a disc, like a black moon with many wriggling arms. Wriggling is such a great word. We should use that more. Uh, but as time passes, you can tell it is growing larger and larger. Yeah, it's just chilling there, like Java. After you are moved to a location by the counter, cut, uh, counter card effect, you'd still take a horror. That was all advancing the agenda. We now draw the top card of the encounter deck. And what is it? It is Visions of Futures Past. That's not terrible. We're going to... I'm doing a 3 to a 5. And for each card I fell by, I discard the top card of my deck. Hopefully this gets rid of a couple of my weaknesses. And I pulled a minus 3. So I'm discarding 5 cards for Visions of, Fu Visions of Futures Past. I already had the extra action on my turn anyway because of the agenda. So this that doesn't help me there. But 5 cards going away. Grit Your Teeth goes away. It's a stellar... I mean, it might as well be a stellar... It came with a stellar deck. That is stellar there. 
Um, it's uh, unfortunate that we lost that, but it is what it is. All right, a weakness is gone. Internal injury, three more. Oh, another weakness across space and time. Oh, my track shoes. That makes me sad. And my leather coat. So only one of those five that I'm... I'd like to grit your teeth, but losing, a, losing my track shoes is the only one that could make a really big difference in this scenario. All right, so that was Mythos Phase. Now we go to the invest, my, my turn. I'm going to put the old key ring into play with my first action. That cost me one, and then we put two resources on it, and that's good to go. I'm now investigating with the old key ring. The shroud value is reduced to a zero. I'm investigating a two to a, a zero. I love this key ring. It's so great. I pulled a minus four. So my value goes down to a minus two. That corrects itself to a zero. Zero to zero, I win. Since I succeed, I lose a supply. I get a clue. It is now my third action. I'm trying to wonder how much I want to gamble here. I do have the three clues to advance. And I, I think I might... I might take this opportunity to get an extra clue because I'm feeling greedy. So yeah, I'm going to do the old key ring again while I'm here. I'm, I'm thinking about gambling. Do I do a two to a one? It's a short action. You're not a minus one anyway. Why would you use a key ring? Well, it's minus one. It's a two to a one. Oh. But so I, I'm not guaranteed to win. Steve's wondering why would I use a key ring? But again, I'm I'm worried about it from the top. Right, right. I'm, I'm worried about getting that cultist, and if I have to get the cultist and I can move somewhere, that is like worst case scenario. So I don't think I'm going to risk that at all. I could commit neither rain nor snow, but that's a mistake. I think I have enough good cards that I'm just going to use up the key ring while I can, and we're going to get myself that that last clue, and then I'll advance the act. Again, if it said I must immediately advance, then I would have to, but it doesn't say that. Most agendas and acts don't. Uh, there are well the agendas do most acts don't you usually have the option that can control when you want to advance i think right while i'm here and it's a shroud value of a two and i'm pretty set up to do this it makes the most sense to do it this way so i'm doing a two to a zero because of the old key ring i pulled the elder sign so elder sign means i can choose to automatically fail and then if I fail, I, but I already have an additional action, so it doesn't give me another action, right? But I could heal a damage and heal a horror. Don't think that makes that much sense. I'll just take the clue while we're here. Since I got a clue, this goes away. And then I discard the old key ring as per the terms. Again, most assets you'll want to keep and play as long as you can. And most of them, like a lot of the spells, a lot of the guns, um, the flashlight, you can just like use it later like you can as an asset to throw away even when there's no more supplies on it the key ring because it's just a bunch of keys i basically used up all the keys so we just discard that as per the terms on the card all right so look i am now i have one more action i'm going to spend these three clues and we're going to advance the act you are utterly exhausted with no idea as to what can be done to close the rift it is too distant to touch and nothing you do has any effect there is nothing here to guide you apart from the unearthly words that are seeping into your mind. Just then you hear a familiar voice within the echoing chorus and feel yourself compelled to repeat it. Claude Ostium. You whisper at first the words on the tip of your tongue. You close your eyes to concentrate and the echo grows louder. When it ends and you open your eyes, you're, you face nothing but an inky abyss and the tear has vanished. Remove the edge of the universe from the game. So this gets removed from the game. All right, since that's removed from the game, I get moved here. But no, I don't. I get moved here. I still have one more action, so this is good. All right, so this, and then I put into play the tear through time. Tear through time has the same moon symbol. So I just put it right there. And now we go to Act 4, Finding a New Way. With no clear way out of this dimension, you seek another path. Discard the top three cards of the encounter deck. Choose your location discarded by this effect and resolve its revelation ability. So that's the same. If each undefeated investigator has resigned, advance. So I don't see a resign ability on, anywhere on the board. I'm guessing it's going to be a tear through time, right? So what is, what was, whatever, whatever. Oh, sorry. What is, what was, what will never be. You see it all and it sees you. Creepy. I have one more action. So now I'm here chilling with Yog sothith That ain't great. So I'm going to try to move here. But before I move, I have to test willpower. Now, he cannot take attacks of opportunity. So moving doesn't mean he attacks me before I go. Uh, he also can't be evaded. So I can't 
if I if I'm still here in the enemy phase, he's gonna wallop me for one and five or one and five minus how many cards I discard. So to leave here, I need to test willpower or agility three, and if I fail, I cancel the effects of the move. So I'm going to move. I need to pass. I, I wonder how that works with neither rain nor snow. If the test fails, cancel all effects of the failed test. Oh, then I would still be allowed to move. Mm -hmm. That works for me. I like it. It might be good to have that for steps of your crawl. What is this test? What is this test? So I'm basically doing either a agility would be a five to a three. Yeah, I think it's too important to pass this. I'm going to commit neither rain nor snow. And it doesn't really matter what I pull because I'm canceling all effects of a failed test. And we get minus three. I succeeded. Shocker. All right. Because it was basically a four, five, six, seven, eight to a three minus three. I'm good. So I'm back to another dimension, right? And I think the jump is I can move. Yeah, it's connected to another dimension if you look at the, uh, the connections. The only thing that's connected to another dimension other than tear through time. So I could go from there to there, but why the heck would I want to do that? <laughs> so, oh, wait, I was moved by a card effect, so I do have to take a horror. Because when that went away, that is an encounter card effect, so I'll put that on Peter Silvestre. My turn is over. At the end of my turn, I lose a horror. Oh, wait, yeah. Enemy phase, agglomeration of spheres. The agglomeration of spheres, his hunter keyword would trigger because he could go from there to there to there. That's why that's connected. That makes more sense to me. It's for hunter keywords. I figured it out. We got there. So we're going to go from here to here. Wait a sec. Did I cheat earlier? Towering Luminosity is not connected to Steps of Yardroll. I would have had to go here, then here. Right. All right. I'm just noticing this now. So when I went back to steps of yard roll, those aren't connected. So I would have had one less action the way that played out. So I will just take, I'll just put this clue back because I knew I, I would have wanted another action here. So I would just, if we do the action economy, I would have one less action because I would have had to move here. This is connected to that, which is connected to that. So I will, uh, to make that right, I will put that extra clue back. And that means I would still have my key ring hope everyone followed that any questions about that put that in the comments below yeah i don't love when they have scenarios where the connection is one way but does not exist the other so the steps of yard roll you can go from there to there i was lucky that this was out because that would have given me another ability to move there the question is would i have ended my turn there no i wouldn't have because i had two actions so i would have another move move uh and then i assume I committed all the same cards. All right. So why did I notice that? Because I'm now trying to figure out the hunter. The, the, the shortest direction for the conglomeration of spheres is through unstable vortex. So he's actually a three turns away from getting to another dimension. All right. Enemy phase is done. Upkeep phase. I'm going to draw a card. Uh, un unexpected courage. And we're going to take a resource. So I need to resign. I, I don't know what I need to resign, but I just need to resign. So <laughs> I have zero clues. I forget how many clues I need to resign, if I'm being quite honest, but I know there's some clues on there. So I took a card. I took a resource. We go to the Mythos phase. We put the first Doom on Agenda 3. We now take an encounter card. It is... The collapsing reality. If you are at an un un extra dimensional location, I am not discarded and take one damage. Otherwise, take two damage. So I take two damage, which is fine. It's better than taking a damage and a horror. I do have this mysterious raven. So if I killed off Dr. Morgan at some point, that wouldn't be the worst thing. I also have the will to survive. So we're fairly strong. Oh, at the end of a round, I would have had to put a doom on that. This should be shuffled into this encounter deck. No, I, I put that in play when I advanced the round. Uh, this should have a clue on it. And then the end of last round, it would have gotten shuffled in because it would have gotten put to the discard pile because I did not put a, a doom on it, which is fine. Or do I want to put a doom on it? 
I might want to put a Doom on it. What's that connected to? Connected to that. So I can go there and get that clue in case I need it. Yeah, why not? We'll put a Doom on that. If you like it, then you got to put a Doom on it. That's what they say. They all say it. Trust me. All right. My first action is... I'm going to move here. I still have this old key ring. Just chilling. I will use the old key ring with my second action. And this being over here is nice because now the collaboration of spheres is not connected to the prismatic vortex. And that's still the only path he can get to me. So, yeah, I did the hunter thing, right? So we're doing a 2 to a 0 with my gold key ring for my second action. Minus 3, that modifies up to a 0. 0 to a 0, I win, so I get this clue. That's my second action. Now I discard that. My third action, I'm going to move to Prismatic Cascade. And I do not have a fourth action because I did not fail a test at all this round. Enemy phase. Closest way for him to get to a green is through the steps of Yard Girl. So we're going to move the agglomeration of spheres there. My upkeep phase, I draw a card. Last chance, and I take a resource. Meet those phase. We put another Doom on the agenda. We take the top encounter card. It is tear through space. Now because I pulled oh this, I would not have put a Doom on this, so that gets discarded. We'll put that right where that was. It gets one clue. Since that came from the top of the encounter deck, it surges. We get another encounter card. Dimensional Doorway. Put Dimensional Doorway into play, then draw the topmost hex card in the encounter discard pile. So this comes into play. It's trial value 2. It's connected to the tear through time, but it's also connected to the blue triangle, and I have no blue triangles on the board. Shroud value 2, clue value 1. At the end of your turn, if you were there, you must either spend two resources or shuffle it back into the encounter deck. These are all connected to ther tear through time, so lots of options there. Uh, I do have to draw the topmost hex in the encounter discard pile. There are no... Oh, Visions of Futures Past. Got it. So now I'm testing Visions of Futures Past at 3 to a 5. If I fail, we get an extra action. I did fail. I pulled a zero. So I failed by two. I discard two cards, Guts and Resourceful. I'm not happy to see that go away, but I do get an extra action this turn. Done. So I could... Yeah, we're going to do it this way. I'm going to play Will to Survive. For four, it's a fast action. Play only your turn. Until the end of your turn, do not reveal chaos tokens for the skill, any skill test you perform. So the nice thing is I already failed the test, so don't hate that. And now I get four actions where I don't have to pull any tokens. So I'm going to move here. I'm evading this dude. I'm moving here. I passed the movement test, and now I'm in the tear through time. And I have one more action. Steve, Steve's keeping trying to mm. <laughs> actions for me. If I spend two clues, I can resign. I can spend two clues as an action. So spend two clues and then do the action of resigning. And there's two clues per investigator there. Uh, I have one more action. I'm going to grab a clue. I do not have another action to do that skill test. All right. Enemy phase, upkeep phase. That dude readies. I draw a card. I take a resource. I'm not putting a doom on the tear through time, so that goes away. Meet those phase, you put a third doom on the agenda. Draw on a counter card. It is haunting recollection for each copy in your if for each card in your hand. If there's a copy of that card in your discard pile, take one horror. I don't think there is. I don't I only have one copy of each of these, which is nuts. So if I take no horror from this effect, I just discard the top three cards on my deck. So I discard Warren Rice, I discard the knife. I discard Improvised Weapon, and then, with my first action of the turn, I'm going to spend two clues and resign, and we advance. That was ridiculously easy. <laughs> I don't know. That 
you're using that that easy. Uh, so you discover a path that looks somewhat familiar and follow it even though your task is complete. You now understand that in closing the tear, you may never make it home. The fear of being lost here forever spurs you onward through an archway leading into an overgrown corridor. A damp wooden door leads you out into a pocket of thin rain and dark sky. Cement turns to gravel, then marble, then steel, then grass. You cross impossibly long meadows and make your way through dense woods before fatigue finally sets in. That's when it sets in. After, it's finally right there after like 13 days of walking. Drained of all energy, you cannot go any further. Your body gives out. R1. I'll, I'll read it this time. Why not? This is the end. Bring this home in style. So R1. Due to do lying on your back in a patch of wet grass, you find yourself staring longingly at the night sky. Somehow you are once again atop Sentinel Hill, unable to recall exactly how you got here. You are mesmerized by the night sky. Seconds become minutes, and minutes become hours. Eventually you are found and lifted to your feet by a group of Dunwich citizens. What happened? What are you doing here? They ask you, frightened but curious. You can't seem to find the right words to describe the events that occurred before the, beyond the gate, if they ever truly occurred. There doesn't appear to be any trace of Seth Bishop or of the creatures you fought earlier or of the phantasmal and otherworldly gate. But every time you sleep, you dream. And when you dream, it all comes rushing back. We close the terror reality. We get two permanent physical trauma, two permanent mental trauma. We never fully recover from his or her time or from Stella, never recover from her time spent outside the realm of reality. And then we earn experience X. There are, we get experience zero for that. And then we earn five bonus experience because we save the world from being torn apart and we win the campaign. Dun, dun, dun. So cool. That was a little anticlimactic. It's not a normal win for me if anyone wants to go back to my other playthroughs where it's usually a lot more uh, <laughs> nail biting. There is a, a part, there's an epilogue based on whether you warn the townsfolk or whether you encourage them or comfort them, calm them, uh, whatever. It is what it is. But yeah, I mean, sometimes this scenario can do this where it just, if the locations come out right, it just plays real easy. We didn't even get to Agenda 4. There's a, th you can do like a partial win, I think, if you get to Act 3, which is something I didn't realize the first couple of times. Oh, I lost and I probably didn't even read the epilogue, but you actually get like a, a partial win if you uh, at least get Tear Through Time into play. But yeah, there's a lot of moving parts here. It's like once you kind of learn all the lingo uh, of of how the of all the the keywords and stuff and what's going on there, and to kind of figure out how everything's connected and figure out what you need to do, you're really just doing the same thing twice. You got to get out to the edge of the universe, and then you go back here, and then you got to get back out to the tear through time. Uh, just the way the encounter cards came out was fairly fairly good, and uh, we were able to kill the one traveler. And just always had the cards. The extra action came in huge. So it's, it's, it's really interesting to see how well Stella was suited for this scenario uh, and how much I struggled in Scenario 7. It's, like, pretty, pretty wild. Um, what's up, Tony? Tony, nice way to close out the Survivor Cycle. I agree. A little bit a little bit too easy. I never got the Red Glove Man in play. Come on. <laughs> I got Zeb. Zeb's is chilling. You missed all of your uh, weaknesses. Uh, I did miss all my weaknesses. Steve uh, is pointing out a, a factual statement. We got the call by the mist never came out, chronophobia, and the other two were discarded by what should we call it? Visions of Futures Past. So yeah, that that kind of worked out and, and just had the soaks. Uh, Peter really didn't do much uh, for me either. But yeah, it was never, uh, you know, just uh, made that one rules mistake, but I think that was the most obvious fix because I would have wanted to advance and had one more action because I was I knew I was going to be sent over there with that ugly dude. Um, just uh, all came together. So um, my uh, final thoughts on survivors, uh, even <laughs> awesome scenario. I love how crazy the locations get with the space warping. Yeah, Eric, that is for sure. Even in space, Stella, Stella did deliver, man. Neither rain nor sleet nor uh, yug sothith or. The space warps for sure. <laughs> She's a she can be a beast. She really can. Um, I, again, I'm still. Yeah, I, th I think uh, Silas Marsh uh, just and 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 Ashcan are, are still the two I would turn to. Um, Ashcan just has you know I was kind of a little bit down on on Ashcan and and that was like one of the few investigators that when I put that top ten sold true solo investigator list out that people were like you need to have Ashcan on there and and people didn't really like. The fact that I Yorick there instead, and I understand so Yorick. 
What's up? You lose the dog in the one scenario. Oh yeah. <laughs> just don't, yeah. Just make sure you don't lose your dog when you're on the blood on the altar scenario, because then Ash can't useless but i mean the fact that you always have an ability like every round to potentially put two damage on a uh on an enemy is really nice and that's the one thing that was stellar the way depending on how you build her it's really hard to soup up the survivors to get any kind of reliable damage which is my one thing that i'm always like i i, I tend to put guardians or mystics above survivors because that, that reliability of damage cards that is hard to find with the with the survivor deck but Silas, again, his his strength is so he comes in like a four or a five, whatever he is, and his cards are really suited for him to deal with enemies. And I know a lot of people with True Solo, they just they really they're worried about investigators that can find clues. I tend to find that there's always a way you could build it. You'll find a way to get enough clues. You don't need that many in a True Solo game. But what usually derails my scenarios when things aren't going well isn't clues. It's enemies. Um, that said, I still kind of built this deck erring on the side of getting clues and evasion uh which in most scenarios and the later scenarios worked really well just uh, that hill the scenario seven is a very hard scenario in this in this campaign uh in some ways the return to it makes it easier in some ways it makes it harder so it just uh, it depends on what's going on um what's next arcosa forgotten age i don't know what's next for me with with arkham i'm not gonna lie i uh I, a lot of games right now are clamoring for for spots in my uh my rotation so I uh, probably gonna take a, a rather extended break from Arkham for a couple of months and then kind of revisit. And you know, if people have, if people, there are things that people want to see. Put even like you know side scenarios or whatever. I, you know, maybe a one off might might do a little bit better than this full campaign. There's a lot more time that has to go into these full campaigns, especially when I get into the later scenarios and I'm basically playing through the entire campaign before I get on camera, so to have some kind of narrative that's built and a little bit more organic than just trying to artificially create a, a late round deck so i think um yeah anything that people want to see put in the comments and i'll definitely i take all that into consideration as i barkham. set my schedule uh steve says barkham <laughs> barkham is actually really good barkham was probably the biggest surprise to me in anything arkham i was like wow like they put a lot of thought into barkham uh and and a lot of care into that scenario it's and it's cha more challenging than i thought it would be for a goop roll uh, what's that as a goofy uh, go i don't know what goop roll is a uh, goofy april fool's joke <laughs> it's like here we go but uh yeah stella's a great addition i'm uh I, I i like her i i need to i'd like to play her i think in a co-op situation where i think it'd be interesting to i could see her with her eight and eight just like, all right, let me go, and I'm going to engage that enemy and let them attack me, because you can really do some soak uh, and almost get into some more, like, like all the tanky things you do in, like, Gloomhaven or, or games like that, where you have that one that one character that just made to take damage uh, in, in a way that no one else is made to take as much damage as Estella, for sure, especially when you get some P Peter in her deck, or you get, you know, the, the reason why I took... You know Zeb and Morgan and 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 Warren Warren Rice is just their soaks are so good uh, story assets that it's just like all right let me get as much soak as possible. But uh, quite frankly, didn't need all that much <laughs> in this final scenario. This scenario can crush you. It's it it can be very hard. It's just all about once I was able to get the steps of your roll out and it stayed. You know I just had this and I kept the prismatic cascade out there on purpose. And kept getting enough tear through spaces that I was able to go and get those extra clues and put myself in a place where we were just kind of guaranteed to win. And I, and I am really glad you saw me struggling with that will to survive. I'm very glad I held on to that when I did because that was such a huge turn to be able to uh, move, like move, evade, not to worry about that test at all, get to the tear through time, and then get a clue. It just it's everything. So looking at any comments, don't see any. Uh, thanks again to Steve for standing in. He's not as beautiful as my wife, but he'll do. Appreciate his time. And we will come back. I Again, no apply playthroughs for two weeks. Three weeks from now, I got something planned. I'd be lying if I could tell you what it is. I don't know. But uh, look out for some new games coming up on the channel in the next few weeks. I have a, a, a video of Space Hulk, Death Angel, which I have filmed. We're excited to put that on the channel. I am about to film a episode of, or a playthrough of Cthulhu Death May Die. Really like that game. A lot more than I thought I would, to be honest. It's a very good game. 
So I'm excited about that. I am also going to put on the channel a playthrough of Too Many Bones. Uh, enjoying uh, exploring that game a bit. So that's been fun. I uh, got my Pavlos house that came out on Sunday. Check that out if you're at all interested in uh, anything in the war game genre. It's really, really good. A surprise how much overlap there was between some of the mechanics in that and Dawn of the Zeds. But uh, now that I'm learning you know, about Herman Lutman's background, and it makes a lot more sense for me. But uh, but the uh, Pavlos house is a very interesting game. So a lot of exciting things. Obviously, Maze Night, Spirit Island. I got a, a playthrough of Finder of Paths Unseen coming out on Sunday. It's going to be a Dahan Insurrection scenario against uh, Scotland? I don't know. Somebody, somebody, some jerk adversary. Uh, so check that out. But that is it. See no questions or comments, anything, put it in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, like I always do. In the meantime, thanks for joining me again, and happy gaming.